Hello everyone. In our last video, we discussed how to use a backup object to generate a CSV. Within today's video, we're going to both automate this process using our scheduler object and send this file within an email as well as to our FTP server. On display is the original project from our last video. And to get started, let's begin by establishing our SMTP server settings. To do this, I'll ensure that the Home tab is selected. And in the top left corner, I'll click our System Parameters. To configure our SMTP server, we'll select the Email tab and enable the Email function. And then configure our server settings. The server within this demonstration is a Google SMTP server. By selecting the recipient box below, I've also added myself as a recipient into group A. One step I always advise when adding an SMTP server is to select the Test SMTP Settings button after you've added a recipient to verify your settings prior to project download. As you can see, our settings are successful, so let's close our system parameters and open up our backup object. The backup object, as you might recall, can be found within the Data Slash History tab. In our last video, we configured our backup as a global object by selecting Backup Global. Currently, I have two global objects within my list. To begin, I'll select my first object, and at the top, you'll notice we now have an email tab, and our email checkbox is no longer grayed out. Let's enable email as our backup position. Down below, I'll also enable follow within our trigger address to reset LV0 after the backup is finished. Next, I'll select the email tab. And I'll add group A to my list of recipients. Our subject line is required, so I'll type data sampling during this example. And then I'll click OK to close my object. In the second half of this video, I'm going to demonstrate FTP transfer from the HMI to my PC. So I'll leave the backup object for my event log at its current settings and we'll exit our list. With this change, the CSV file for our data sampling will now be sent to our recipients when our backup is triggered. Within this project, we want our backup to be automated, so we'll need to set up a schedule. To do this, I'm going to select the Object tab, and under Time Related, I'll select our scheduler object. In the following dialog, I'll select New and create a schedule for our CSV export. I'll name this schedule Export, and I'll leave our action to Bit On and our address as LB0. Here in the Time Set tab, we can configure our schedule. I'll set a constant time, which will take effect on any selected day of the week. Now within a single scheduling object, we can't configure a different time for each day. But if this is a requirement within your project, you can easily create multiple scheduling objects or configure an address-based scheduling object that can be changed dynamically. I'm going to set a constant time of 2359. Check each day of the week, and then click OK to save my object. And now we'll run an offline simulation. On my display, I have our simulation running, and I've configured my PC's time to 1158, meaning that we should see our backup object trigger momentarily.
With our backup complete, I'll receive an email with an attached CSV file that contains our data, which we can see here. Since our email was successful, let's configure a second object to perform an automated FTP transfer. Before we begin, I'd like to note that the file transfer feature is only available when designing a project for a CMT or CMTX series HMI. When automating an FTP transfer for a CSV, we need three objects. Our backup object to generate the CSV, our scheduler object to trigger a bit, and an action trigger global object to perform a file transfer based on the state of our scheduled bit. Currently, we've configured both the backup object and our scheduler, so we'll need to select the object tab and create our action trigger. We'll find the action trigger on the top right, and within the drop down list, I'll select action trigger global. In the following dialog, I'll select New. And in our Action Triggers menu, we'll select Value Changed on top. Here we can define a list of sequential actions based on the status of a bit or word value. The trigger address can be left at LB0, and the condition will be when our bit changes from off to on. In our first action group, I'll create a delay. The delay will be set to 10 seconds. Now a delay this long is probably unnecessary, but it's a precaution to ensure that our CSV file has been created before we initialize a transfer. In our next action group, I'm going to select File Transfer. I'll define this transfer as an upload from the HMI to our FTP server and configure the domain and login credentials. In the File tab, I'll configure our HMI and server file path to an address. I'll use LW1 during this demonstration. Lastly, in the Status tab, I'll set our result register to LW21, and then we'll click OK and close our object. Within this demonstration, because our files are split by date, I'd like to configure our file transfer to send only the latest file. To do this, I'm going to select the Project tab and configure a macro that will change the name of the file that the FTP will send. To begin, I'll select Macro, and within our Macro Manager, I'll select New. I'll enable Periodical Execution and define our variables. First, I'll declare an integer that will hold today's date. Then I'll declare a character array to hold our file location. And I'll initialize this variable as event log slash capital E capital L underscore. This will be the folder and prefix of our file name. Next, I'll define two more character arrays, one to hold today's date, and the other as a container for our entire string. To get today's date in the proper format, I'm going to use a special keyword, date to des. And in the parameters, I'll place a zero as our offset, and our integer variable to hold the date. On the line below, I'm going to use a second keyword called des to ASCII to convert our date into a string variable. Now we'll format our string by concatenating it 
into our container. To do this, I'm going to use a third keyword called string cat, where the first argument placed within my parameter is the string that will be concatenated into our container. I'll begin with prefix. Next, I'll add today's date. And in our last string cat, I'll concatenate .csv into our string. Next, we'll finish our macro by using a function called setData to set our string into our FTP file name address, which in this case is LW1. With that finished, I'll name my macro, select Save and Compile, and then download this to my HMI for testing. All right, so I've downloaded the project to my HMI, and using WebView, I can view my HMI's display. I've configured our HMI's time to one minute before the preset time of our scheduler and so our export will trigger automatically in a few seconds. I also have the FTP folder open on my desktop. With our backup triggered, we'll wait the 10 second delay that I've configured prior to transfer. And as we can see, our file transfer was successful, which concludes our two-part series on scheduled CSV export and remote transfer. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our YouTube channel and select the Playlist tab. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.